Pour écouter cette session en français, veuillez cliquer en bas de votre écran sur l'onglet Interprétation et sélectionner le drapeau français. Hello, bonjour. Barry Saleo. On behalf of Ikle Africa, the African Center for Cities, our future cities, Red Cross Crescent Climate Center, and partners, we're excited to welcome all of you to the Rise Africa 2022 Action Festival. Rise Africa has been growing since 2020 as a platform for thinkers, doers, and enablers committed to inspiring action for sustainable cities. This year's theme is creativity. For me, this means blending skills to be able to communicate the climate change complexity in rapidly urbanizing city. I think we have such untapped potential in Africa when it comes to creativity. I love the idea that we need to create space to be creative. I think so often we rush into trying to act immediately um, and creativity is a a good reminder to sit back and to really tap into the capacities we have. I think agency is finding ways of giving power back to people, to groups, to young people, especially on a continent where it's a very young population. The, the, the value, the inputs from the youths, people who are considered inexperienced, have valuable contribution and they're really taking that into consideration. I think what agency means to me is change from, from the ground up. The importance of urgency is the recognition of the past and the recognition that we've lost time. Urgency is about acting now to build more inclusive, productive and resilient cities. There's this need to creatively redesign and unlearn and explore new ways of thinking. The festival is hosting 33 sessions with 135 provocateurs from across Africa and the world. Every session aims to show new ideas, showcase ongoing action, and launch new initiatives, bringing participants together to chart a new route forward. We hope that the festival program will inspire you. At the festival, we encourage you to showcase your business and projects, build lasting partnerships, unleash your creative potential, commit to sustainable action. Rise Africa is about translating ideas into action. What actions are you going to commit to this festival? Before the session begins, it is important to note that you're being recorded. And by participating, you are given the consent to be recorded. All recordings will be available on the program page after the festival. Creative expression is vital for creating new futures for our cities. And so we invite you to enter this session in the spirit of creativity and dreaming. Je vis avec un mal dont je ne suis pas le porteur. Je vis avec un mal qui me donne de l'espoir. Atteinte de l'albinisme, déficience intellectuelle, handicapé physique, malentendant, malvoyant, je suis dédaigné par la population. Exclusion, désaffiliation, je suis exclu de la société. Ils disent que je suis différent d'eux. Discrimination, marginalisation, je vis en marge de la société, je suis la risée de la société. Stigmatisation, ségrégation, je proteste contre les travers de la société, je refuse ce mode de vie. Inclusion, insertion, nous promouvons l'alphabétisation, l'éducation inclusive, l'accès aux infrastructures, l'accès aux services sociaux pour les personnes vivant avec un handicap. La création d'un système distributif pour réduire la pauvreté, la reconnaissance du travail non rémunéré, la réduction du chômage à longue durée, la valorisation de l'égalité pour toute la communauté. Je suis différent d'eux. Le handicap n'est pas une fatalité. Sachez que mon handicap a fait de moi une bombe à épanouissement. Sachez que mon handicap a fait de moi une bombe à épanouissement. And here we go. Thank you very much for joining uh, today. Uh, it's such a pleasure to see all of you here. And I am very sure that you have joined this session in the spirit of creativity and agency and urgency. Now, let me invite my co-facilitator, uh, Bettina, to introduce herself. 
And now I forgot, I remember that I didn't say my name before. I am Eddie Jemba from the Red Cross and Red Crescent Climate Center. And I bring you warm greetings from the Pearl of Africa, Uganda. Bettina, over to you. Thank you so much. And from the Pearl of Africa to nearly the Cape of Good Hope, uh, I'm in South Africa, actually in Namakoland in the middle of the desert. My name is Bettina Köller. I'm a colleague of Eddie's with the Climate Center. And uh, I am really passion passionate about learning. And hybrid events, I think, are here to stay. So I'm really excited that today we're talking about hybrid events. Thanks, Eddie. Thank you very much, Bettina. And you have heard from us, and therefore we would like to hear from you. Who are you and where are you joining from? Um, please type in the chat so we can get to know who is in the room. As we get ourselves ready to talk about hybrid events. I remember, uh, I think before the, the pandemic, I really wanted to participate in a conference that was taking place in Spain. Uh, I couldn't fly there. Uh, and I wanted to just be a part of it. But guess what? There were no options for joining virtually. So there was no option of hybrid. Look what COVID has brought to us. Anyway, thank you very much, Femi. I can see that. Um, yes, I can see Olu Femi. Uh, thank you for joining us, Maria. Um, working with Christian Aid Island uh, from Dublin. Thank you for joining. Good to to see that we are connecting from different places and different spaces and from different uh, organizations. Uh, yeah, I see uh, someone, Laura from Germany. Uh, thank you for joining. Kron from Madrid. Uh -huh. 20 years living and working in Africa. Good. Thank you for joining Frida. Thank you for joining uh, future, our future cities. All right, I can also see Lucia uh, from, uh, from a Climate and Development Network based in Cape Town. All right, well, I hope you get an opportunity, you take this opportunity to introduce yourself. That's another way of connecting, uh, where we connect together. In, uh, in the meantime, Bettina, tell us, is there any links between interactivity and the, the risks that we face on a day-to-day -day basis? People have called it climate change, and I agree. Um, is there any relationship between this creative communication and climate change? Um, yes, of course there is. I'm hoping you can see my screen. Can you see it? Mm. it looks very strange on my side. Let me try again. Yes, it, it does look strange. All right, let me try again and see if you can see it now. Yes, that's good. Perfect. Good. Well, um, it is really lovely to be here and it's really nice to see all of you. This is a very interactive session. So I think in this spirit, and we are a small enough group, feel free to be interactive, engage, ask questions in the chat. We really want you to participate. We have a couple of exercises where we hope you'll be able to share your insights, your pearls of wisdom and your knowledge. Um, and in this spirit, I'd like to open and say welcome we sometimes think it's really, really tricky to have dialogue. We, we know that when we talk about climate risk, and especially when we talk about climate risk, we're dealing with a lot of complexity. We're dealing with different agendas. We're dealing with multiple layers of complexity that we are addressing. And so I would like to ask from you, can you type in the chat quite quickly, what are the one, two, or three things that you think are most important when we talk about dialogue in complex situations? What do you think is most important when we think about dialogue in complex situations? What values do we need to embrace? What is important to remember? What are your thoughts? And I'll remind you. 
Maybe read chat. Something is yes, coming uh, in. Uh, oh. My chat is totally. Listening, patience, trust, open mind, listening. Uh, who is in the meeting space? Which voices are there and which are central? Um, huh. All great points. One another and openness. Fantastic. Great. Ah, and here my chat is unfrozen. Really nice. Um, ah, 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 hello, this one is just covers. We're cut some of this. Um, what is here in the chat is, of course, really the foundation of, of important dialogue. And one thing that is quite important also is how, while we, just while we serve, we may but it's not always safe. In virtual meetings. Huh, Bettina, I think your internet is. Still here, right? uh, ah. yeah, it skips a bit, but let's try again and see. In virtual meetings, that's let's the last thing. Hope. All right. So, in virtual meetings, of course, we also need to make sure we are safe, we keep everyone safe. We allow candid dialogue to emerge, and at the same time, we really struggling. Eddie, shall I maybe ask uh, someone else to share the screen while I speak? That. Let me do that. Thank you. That might be the better option. Sorry for this. No. So maybe while Eddie gets ready, I wanted to just flag and maybe I can just talk, Eddie, um, that's fine for the next two slides. Just to get us into the right maybe you can also call these serious games, events where we would actually play games physically with each other. And if you can click to the next slide, Eddie, perfect. And in these events, we'd have a lot of interaction, engagement, and fun. And a lot of it had to do with us being present, in person, sharing an experience and an emotion, linking the head and the heart. And that is really a fantastic way of unpacking some of the complexity, letting go of some of the agendas. Next slide. Okay, it seems that Bettina's internet is frozen. Well, I'll pick it up from here. So some of the things that we have adopted at the Climate Center, at the Red Cross and Red Crescent Climate Center, is embracing games, as she mentioned before, to help people to understand and appreciate um, uncertainties related to climate, the climate system, and um, encourage the usage of the of climate information. So this here is a seasonal forecast game, and it basically helps people to practice with decision making um, um, under uncertainty. Yes, Bettina, and then you thank are back. you. Thank you, Eddie. And this is a, we're just demonstrating live in action why sometimes in person meetings are more amazing because you are quite secure of your audience that is there and even of the speakers being able to speak most of the time at least. So thanks, Eddie, for uh, taking over. Can we go to the next slide? So we can unpack this amazingly in person and we can do monitoring in person where actually people have to be physically at the same space in the same place and where a lot of learning can take place and what we would like to explore in this session is really to say how can we bring some of this amazingness of the face-to-face -face engagement and some of the convenience of virtual meetings into one space so we can draw on on the one side the real sparking of emotions of people being physically able to engage with each other, while also having through hybrid meetings, 
the way of linking different groups or communities or individuals virtually to be learning. And this is what we're going to talk about uh, in this session. And with this, I'll hand over to Eddie to guide us through the speed dating. Thank you very much. Well, we would like to send you in two groups. All right. Uh, we are, I'm going to invite uh, my other technical help, Georgie. She will be sending us into groups of three. When you are there, please share one of your of your experiences uh, either um, it could be online event facilitating an online event organizing design and facilitating an online event and a hybrid event so it can be one of the two or both depending on you know what you choose but share one story uh, uh, and any challenge that you encountered you'll be there you get an opportunity to meet someone hopefully you have not met since the conference began and then you have 10 minutes of storytelling one another what's your experience with online meetings what's your experience with hybrid meetings and what challenges did you encounter when we gather back we'll get to hear from you what transpired when you were uh, speed dating um there i go you must be seeing an invitation hi erica hello Oh, yeah. I see. I, I'm fine. <laughs> nice to meet you. My name is Ivan. Yeah. Uh, good morning uh, or good evening or oh, afternoon. Good <laughs> it's afternoon. afternoon here in London. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nice. I'm, I'm joining from South Africa. Where, where about are you two joining from? London? Um, I'm, I'm joining, joining from Amsterdam, but it's the same. Well, yeah. the same as South Africa and one same hour. Same line. <laughs> yes, we are in the same line. Yeah. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. I think I think that's a great opportunity to to very much test the theme of this this discussion, actually. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I guess we talk about um, our experience of um, yeah. hybrid or online um, facilitation. Do they mean ten minutes per person? No, they wouldn't. No, right. no. Okay. <laughs> sure no it's ten sure. minutes for the whole group, I think. Mm -hmm. Sure, um, I can start it. Up, um, start us off. Um, I think one of the um, recently we, uh, I was working on a workshop to develop a theory of change with people across um, um, quite disparate um, time zones. So we had somebody calling in. Um, a couple of people calling in from Bhutan. Uh, most people were from, you know, GMT around time. So at least, you know, we had, yeah, at least, you know, most of the people were from the same region. Um, so yeah, trying to develop a theory of change, um, also trying to build consensus around how we thought change would happen. A big challenge was um, being able to get people to interact with the tools, the interactive tools that we're hoping that they would use. So we were using um, Jam Google Jamboard, which you know has its limitations and you would have participants who would have challenges with the speed of their um, internet and or um, it's a new platform for some people which takes some getting used to or it's so easy for people to not engage with the putting the post-its up, um, rather expecting someone else to um, put the um, post-its up. So yeah, in terms of note-taking, it's very difficult to keep track of the conversations and how they link to what was moving on the Jamboard, if anything was left out. And, you know, you can only put so many words on a post-it in Jamboard. Mm. It's, it's, 
it, 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 it was tough. Yeah. Yana, absolutely no. kidding me. Just to link, to link uh, on what was said earlier is that uh, an incredible element of, of these virtual engagements is that there's, there's a safe space, but sometimes the, the space is maybe a bit too safe and that, that very often lead to someone who is maybe a bit shy and quiet to remain as such and not really feel the necessary pressure to speak out and maybe make a very, very valuable uh, contribution um, as it would maybe in a face-to-face -face meeting. Uh, we had an experience with colleagues from Kenya and not too long ago, which was the first time I'd ever attended a virtual meeting where myself and two of my colleagues were the only um, three people that joined on our computers and the rest was was happening in person and and there it was quite an interesting space to to get exposed to to what it is you're actually missing out you know not really seeing the people's faces that that you are talking to but it and like not really engaging with with what is being spoken about but what it also did show us that we we were we formed part of an incredibly important conversation from the comfort of our offices uh, without having to fly across the, the continent and contributing further to to climate change and all these terrible things that come from 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 fast travel and we we were part of this and built long lasting networks and yeah so the i think the speed and and efficiency at which like meetings are taking place and connections are being built have increased tremendously which it's also very exciting. So there's always this present card that play. Um, now I've been participating, but also facilitating uh, some workshops. And um, I agree with you. It's, it's quite difficult to keep everybody in the discussion, especially when it takes longer time. So it's my my conclusion is that it really needs very good uh, preparation, understanding, uh, involvement of people already before the meeting or um, the meeting starts, the show comments, uh, but also during the meeting itself. Um, as facilitator, I found that I think, I think we lost you there. Tanisha, are you? Are you also okay? Oh, she's back. You're back. Sorry, we lost you there from. Yeah, I'm, I'm back. Um, Erica, we lost you at, um, yeah, you'd said um, prior involvement um, mm -hmm. is good um, as part of the preparation, yeah. but during the meeting, and then that's when you dropped off. Oh, then I dropped, it's quite difficult as facilitator to keep an oversight and to give space to people who don't want to, to talk a lot or who are shy or not so um, in the front line, you know. Sure, you have this, the, the, the chat, and you can use different, uh, but still I think, and also the interconnection between all the participants itself, you can do it with, with groups, breakout groups, that's working well. Um, but it's going very fast always, and there's the dilemma, you don't want to have a long, a long mm -hmm. webinar, but you also want to give space to the to, to people to interact. Yeah, that's a big frustration of mine. Well, yeah, know, I'm like, uh, you know, if you're going to have a dialogue, you need to have enough time for people to speak. But yeah. you're always you've only got three hours and, then, and, you know, you have to throw in a break because there's only so much stamina that people have at looking at screens. The other thing I see is mm -hmm. um, 
um, yeah, when you're saying about facilitation, getting people to speak who are not speaking, you know, with Zoom, you've got the tools of um, people putting their hands up and, you know, how it, if you're facilitating, it cues people up and you get so stuck in, you know, going through the queue that if anyone else, um, you know, you can't, you can't really give the space or you don't get the chance yeah. to, you forget to prompt other people who aren't being um, very vocal to um, chime in if they want to. Plus you can't even see them. That's the other thing. Yeah. Um, in my workshop, very rarely did people put up their camera, um, whether it was didn't want to or couldn't. And you know, you have some people driving during these calls on their mobile phones. So yeah, a lot of it is out of the control, but I do love that anyone from anywhere in the world can be, yeah. albeit with some difficulty at the table. Whereas, you know, we're here in London having our, you know, wonderful webinars, talking about people's lives and, you know, in countries where they can't actually come over to our offices. Yeah, anyway, so yeah. Yeah. Absolutely, it's almost like these these trade offs between the benefits and then the, the like the, the negative parts of virtual engagements is, is quite interesting, and it's amazing to see how <clears throat> platforms such as Zoom and Skype are almost evolving and adapting uh, in ways in which they they almost try and ensure that efficiency in these virtual engagements are maximized through the different functionalities that they've introduced, which I'm only getting familiarized with quite now. And it's quite, quite incredible. And I'm very, very excited to see where, where these platforms will be in, in five to 10 years. Like if you think about it, it's only two years since, since they've almost, almost scaled Just up. Just two years. Um, yeah. I was just going to say that. It's crazy. Uh, it's Sorry, I missed the message. I missed the message. We, well, we have only one minute left. Okay. So that was a nice discussion with, with you two. And uh, yeah. uh, would either of you be interested in, in chatting in the, in the open session? I'm just in a room with another colleague, so it might be a little bit diff difficult for me. It's also in the same meeting. Mm -hmm. Um, okay. Yeah. No, I was just gonna um, ask where Ivan, where you are based in South Africa? I'm in Cape Town. I actually work for Italy Africa, one of the hosts of, of Rise Africa. So I'm in okay. the offices from the headquarters of, of where it's all all happening. I'm, mm -hmm. My responsibility is actually to take notes of this whole whole session. So would be um, upon everyone's arrival in the room let's take a group picture how about that yes yeah i like i like kieran's background it's like pictures and a picture it's very cool <laughs> <laughs> okay if you are inspired and you're able and uh, it is safe for you to switch on your camera um please switch on your camera and then i will ask uh, my colleagues either Bettina, Bettina are you able to take a picture or Georgia so that we can take a group picture. Yes, Georgia. All right. One, two, three, and go. I'm still Baby. waiting for Katya's video to come. No. Oh. Ah. <laughs> okay. And there was Femi. All right. Welcome back, all of you. Thank you. Are there any highlights? Are there any highlights uh, from the from your discussions? Share what you had, your neighbor say where there are some resonance. Um, yeah, some some people, some three or four uh, people to share uh, because we are going to have an opportunity actually to use what you share right now in an actual exercise that you'll hear of in a in a moment. What challenges have you encountered in online and hybrid meetings? What did your uh, uh, partner share?
Yeah. I, mean, I think we have one challenge right here. You ask a question and no one says anything. It's definitely a great challenge in virtual meetings. <laughs> totally. Thank you for demonstrating and making your points so clearly. Maybe we have some other points to add. But I also remember Bettina actually, and I see Ivan's hand is up, ready to break the, the, the silence. I remember when you also, one of those meetings, when you say that silence can be embraced in the virtual meeting and then, you know, not pushed away, but rather it's part of the, it's part of the engagement. Yes, Ivan. Thanks so much uh, for that. <clears throat> yeah, just to, to link on uh, what something that, that Bettina also said yesterday to like how, how incredible it is about virtual meetings that we that we have this uh, capacity in them to feel really safe and to, to feel very open for for engaging and new knowledge. But but something that I've that I've realized is very often I, I get the, the the feeling that virtual meetings are almost a bit too safe. Where it, where it allows people to almost just hide behind a black screen and, and not really engage. Whereas very often those are the people with a, with a very interesting and, and captivating ideas that can really add a lot of value to, to a conversation. And where, whereas in in-person meetings, when the whole room looks at you and there's this kind of physical element behind it, you feel sometimes under the pressure to, to say what you really want to say, but you just don't have the courage to say. Whereas I think it's easy to to use use the camera or function to escape that responsibility. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you very much, Ivan, for sharing that. I I agree. Before I think all of you came together, you said I miss the hands. Um, you know, meet someone for the second or third time and like, hey, pleasure to meet you. And indeed, as you mentioned, that you know when we are there physically, you read the body language and then. You know, there's safety. Uh, you can read safety. Yes, Karen. Thanks, like Eddie. It. Thanks, Eddie. Yes, a lot of the points that you've made, I think certainly we shared uh, in our group discussion. One thing that we did say was that in a hybrid meeting, if we'd had, if we've already had the chance to meet participants previously in a face-to-face -face situation, then online interaction becomes much easier. We've already built up that crucial trust before we move to online in a hybrid situation. If we're meeting people for the first time in an online situation, then building that trust and, and that confidence takes longer. So those are some of the things that came out of our discussion. Thanks very much, Carol. Um, Laura? Yes, thank you, Eddie. Um, in the group, um, Lucia, Barbara, and, and I, we share some ideas about hybrid uh, meetings. Uh, on the positive side is the people who can uh, not be able to be impressed, uh, uh, to, to join the meeting physically, they can join uh, online. So that is a positive side. Um, also that um, uh, when there is a hybrid meeting, it is possible also to use some online facilitation um, strategies and, and tools, like for example, uh, Google Slides. You can use Google Slides in a hybrid meeting and you can also use the, in the breakout rooms, uh, these Google Slides to work together. Um, also, uh, you have that, uh, it is possible to have in the, uh, when you have hybrid, you can uh, put the, on, the people who is online in working groups and they can join maybe with a Zoom call or they can join with a WhatsApp. Um, but there must be one person responsible in the working group in order to know when the person wants to talk, maybe intervene or something. Um, then also um, we have that uh, the challenge of time difference because if you have uh, organize a meeting in New York. That was example that Barbara raised. And you start and you make a whole day meeting on a hybrid for people in South Africa, for people in Asia would be an amount of challenge. So she was suggesting maybe to try to um, figure out that the time would be five middle hours for everybody, that everybody can join in a comfortable time. Um, and then in the case of hybrid meetings, it was very important in the case of uh, last Barbara experience to have two big screens in that room. So we can see the people who is online 
And it was easy to watch on one side or the other when people were reacting or trying to join the, the room. Uh, yes. Awesome. Listen, I think this is what they call uh, the wisdom of the crowd. Is that the word? Um, yes. Uh, in the hybrid meetings, we always, uh, I think I have told my, my now we, follow, we facilitate lots of them, Bettina, Bettina and I, and I think the first five minutes, the first 10 minutes of the online or hybrid meetings will determine a lot of engagement, the level of engagement your participants will have. Now, if you start with a long and elongated uh, speech, uh, later on, when you invite people, uh, I think they tend to be hesitant. Now, talking about elongated speech, I don't want to elongate this particular uh, speech. Let me invite Bettina uh, to take us to the next session. Thank you. And thank you for sharing these uh, reflections. Um, I took note of those. I think it's really, it's really important to hear, and I really appreciate the diversity from also appreciating what, what virtual meetings, of course, can bring. It means people can join a meeting without having to own a passport and have a travel budget. And um, of course, it's carbon neutral, more carbon neutral. I really like what was being said about maybe thinking more creatively around how to combine virtual and face-to-face -face meeting. I think we all know maybe that before the pandemic, we had a lot of face-to-face -face meetings, I would say, a lot of us. And maybe some of us were not always at maximum uh, capacity or utility in terms of we're scooting around the world and meeting for a couple of hours. Maybe we can rethink a little bit how to do this. And uh, we don't give you the silver bullet in this session, but we'd like to think along with you and we have a couple of offerings to make. So let's see how we can progress. But now someone said, um, I think it was Ivan. Ivan, I think said, correct me if I'm wrong, yeah, are virtual meetings too safe? And I totally agree. I think sometimes they are so safe, especially if you know there are like five PowerPoint presentations. And so it's kind of totally all right to do your email at the same time while with one half ear listen to a PowerPoint presentation. And if you are doing your email right now, this is a great moment to stop because we would like you to get active and we'd like you to play a game with us virtually and uh, how you can do this is I paste the chat uh, the link in the chat and see if you can in your browser navigate to this URL I hope you can all see it in the chat you should see the screen that Eddie is showing here this game is called headlines game and what we would like to do in this game is to hear from you it is the year 2030 and there are headlines around how we are working together in 2030. It can be as utopian and amazing or as dystopian and depressing as you think you would like it to be. Remember a headline is different to a title of a journal paper. It is not very long and it is not complicated. In fact, it is often short and sharp and maybe teases you a little bit, makes you curious. So you're a journalist in 2030 and you are ready to write some headlines. Are you ready? Ah, thank you, Barbara, for nodding. Kieran, you're looking uh, uh, still hesitant. Okay, thank you. I really, I really want to thank those who can have the camera on. It is amazing to hear that uh, I maybe haven't lost connection and speak into the void for the last five minutes. <laughs> That's really good. So if you're there, are you there? I hope we are now. And if you refresh your screen or Eddie, if you stop sharing, maybe you should now see the option where you can create headline by yourself. See if you can type a headline and Click first enter. You can enter with your name or anonymous. It doesn't matter. I click on the little arrow there. And then you should 
maybe it stays anonymous. And here is where you can add your headline. See if you can click on a headline uh, on the box, type a headline, any headline that you want, dystopian or utopian. In 2030, how are we conducting meetings and what does it feel like? Um, anything at all that you want and click submit. We still are waiting for a headline, so don't be too shy. Eddie uh, is just doing a, a trial there. Share with us, we have the first headline, fantastic. We'll share all of the headlines with you just now. Share with us the headlines of 2030, how our meeting is going to be conducted and how does it feel? Either really good or really terrible or anything at all that you would like. We have a couple more coming up, keep them short and sharp if you want. Fantastic. Yeah, come in. They're coming in. Keep them flowing. The headlines. You're a journalist. You're always working under time pressure. It's really tough, but journalists, I think, are having quite a tough life. So you churn out the headlines and you hope that your headline will be selected for the front page of the newspaper of 24th of May 2030. Um, or maybe 25th of May. That'll be tomorrow, 2030. Very good, keep them coming. Yes, we have a couple here. Very good. You're an awesome group of journalists. We'll just give you one minute. So if you have a headline that you quite like, click enter now, and then we'll move forward to see the last headline. Your deadline is coming up. Click enter now because I will now move you to the, you just made it in time, to the next stage. Now you are looking at the changing your role from being a journalist to now being the editor. Now the editor needs to look at the headlines and say, which of these headlines do I feel are really punchy and good and they're like, they're like hit the nail on the head, as far as you think as an editor. And for those, you give them a little heart. So you should be able to see the headlines of others. Do you see the headlines of others? Not yet. You do? We see them, yes, we do. Fantastic. So, do, we, do we click to see the rest? Do we do the errors? Yeah, you should. So what are we supposed to do? Click click the heart if we like them. If you like it, click the heart. Okay. If you think, no, 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 this one, no, this one wouldn't quite make it. You can't see, select all of them, right? You're an editor. You have to make a choice. So uh, feel free to move back and forth. You can unclick a heart if you want to. Um, and the publication deadline is pretty soon. Have a look and see if you can really look at most of the headlines. And see if there are any you particularly like. Very nice headlines there. I love that one. Travel the world in 80 seconds. It feels like I do that every day sometimes. <laughs> Thank you very much. Some of it is already happening right now. Some definitely positive ones here as well. Just a Is there sharing the screen? Thank you so much. Good. I will then advance. Shall I advance? Let's have a look at the top headlines. So we have some that are definitely 
the front runners. I will share our top ones with you. Um, everything that got. Bettina, uh, should I share the screen? Yeah, maybe that'll be nice. Unless everyone can see it already. Um, let's see. So the top runner is stuff know nothing about each other. I think I feel already a little bit like that. Obviously that resonated with a lot of us. I can see Frida's already driving like that was exactly your point I think earlier. Yeah, Eddie, shall we go to the next one? And feel free if you want to have any comments here, you're welcome to um, add any comments. The next slide. Do I need to advance it on my side? Oops. Do you see the final report now? Ah, this is another technology challenge. Yes. So here we have the final ones. Staff not knowing about each other, the definitely the first place. The next one, no planes needed as we play games together. We're not sure if it's an or We are saving the planet. Definitely a more positive one. And uh, why are the poorest marginal tech advances? Really important. So understanding when we do something, who is actually still not able to participate in virtual meetings? And uh, travel the world in 80 seconds. Africa is the first to be climate neutral. How's that for ambition? I like it. African youth startup resolved her community food crisis, community's food crisis, and boom, artificial intelligence takes over. And we have good news, coral reefs restored, biodiversity returns to great barrier <coughs> And a couple of us, I think you can scroll at them at your leisure. Thank you so much for uh, sharing your head. And maybe we can take a moment, all of you, to be how is this for you? Like, difficult, easy, challenging. How is it for you? Doing this in the virtual space hand or a new hand but if you want the floor it is yours otherwise uh, i'll give it to the floor to terry good afternoon um good afternoon. i think doing this um online and where you could do it anonymously meant that you could write anything but mm -hmm. also easily <laughs> not do anything thank you yeah yeah, it's a tricky. So on the one side, you can just keep doing your emails, of course. Um, you, you can see on the back end how many people actually log in. So sometimes it's interesting. Someone says Mentimeter and you see only three people are participating of a meeting of 50. And you go like, yeah, how representative is this now? Um, it's true. But also I like what you said. It can, it can provide real anonymity that you will not have in a face-to-face -face meeting. So if it's about delicate issues, it is true. It is a really truly allows you to be anonymous. Yeah. Thank you for those points. Any other thoughts or reflections on the headlines game? Uh, Barbara, we can see you. Speak, but, um, yeah. I'd love to know what you use something like that for. I thought it was really mm. fun and I could see that it could be useful if you were trying precisely to give a space to different perspectives on an issue, mm. um, but it doesn't, and then and then you'd still have to have the conversation on it. I'd be interested exactly. to know exactly what you use it for. And and just by the way, was that Mentimeter? And if not, what's the software? <laughs> you know, how did you set it up? It was fabulous. Yeah. So um, um, to answer your first question first, 
The way we use it is really to say, let's say you have a really tough issue that you want to, a, a complex challenge that you want to tackle in a virtual meeting. You can use this to surface some hopes, but also maybe some something people are really depressed or frustrated about because it is anonymous and because you can say something tough by it maybe being a little bit funny as well. I mean, the first one, staff not know staff know nothing about each other. It's quite a tough one, really. It's you're saying like we can't take it anymore, right? And maybe it is it is really something like this. If if this was our topic, we would now say let's unpack this a little bit. Let's have a group to say what is happening on the social side when we have social engagements only virtually. How can we mitigate it? What would be next steps? And so, yes, very much indeed, Barbara, these are sort of conversation starters. They're maybe about engaging, but engaging creatively in a way that you can also then really get a bit deeper into um, linking the heart and the mind um, while tackling, tackling some tough issues. We talk a little bit later also about how to use humor and cartoon art um, in, in the same vein. So they're not by themselves, but they're really um, opening a door to a deeper conversation. And uh, the platform is called Good Games. Um, it's, it's called Good Focus Games. I can put the website in the chat just now. And it's basically a platform where we have developed with a, with a group of uh, game designers and virtual programmers, platform programmers, a whole series of engagements that are serious and virtual. And this is just a taste of one of the games. There is a game where you can play a decision for the season. Maybe some of you have played this with Pablo about a dice and you throw a dice. And if it's a six, it's a drought and the one is a flood. You do that virtually. There are cartoon galleries and a whole range of other tools virtually. It works really nicely if people are engaged virtually from around the world and they are not just joining on their phone because if you join on your phone, it's really, really hard to have another device with uh, this platform open. So there are some limitations here, but I'll put the link in the chat. And if you have any further questions, also feel free to reach out. Yeah. That is it. Right. Am I saying your name correctly, by the yeah, way? That's good. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Um, so um, I, I think um, adding to Barbara's mm -hmm. points, um, I can definitely see that this um, game would have been useful as part of trying to um, brainstorm some potential outcomes during a theory of change um, mm -hmm. um, workshop. We use Google um, uh Google Jamboard, which is very limited as to how you can use the post-its and how you can comment. So I really like the idea that you can comment. But I think um, as I was doing, um, you know, reflecting same issue with um, other collaborative, um, plat you know, collaborative platforms when you're trying to do Zoom is the challenge of um, similar to the doing it on the phone is the challenge of participants having to have Zoom open and have access to exactly. a second screen to be able to participate at the same time or having to toggle between because even I still struggle trying to toggle between being able to see participants mm -hmm. and my presentation. Anyway, so yeah, that's what I was going to add. Yeah, and Thank bandwidth you. is another issue, right? If you have two platforms open, it's another issue. So so yes, I think when designing hybrid events or, or, or um, virtual events, it is really important to consider this very carefully. I really think the way that people can really access in terms of having time available, in terms of having the technology available or, or being in the same place, I think this is exactly where hybrid events are offering a great opportunity because you could say, let's actually have people do a headlines game physically in person in location a b and c all over the world in asia and africa and depending on the time zone we we had that sort of hinted earlier and then you could have a couple of people do this virtually and then you can put it together um, so it did it, it, it i think we need to really get a bit better when we craft hybrid events and how to really understand the complexity of what we are working with in the different locations. I think very often we say, ah, so it's either virtual for everyone or not virtual for everyone. And mm. I think we're, we're moving. We're moving in a new direction. 
Eddie, I think you're making a sound to say you are next, and I'll hand over to you. Thank you. Yeah, I am, but I wanted to add uh, something there. I think on the design side, and you know, we didn't conceive this as you know a one-stop shopping center where we'll do uh, how do you design, how do you facilitate, and how do you keep your participants again, but rather touch here and there, and then tap into the wisdom of the crowd. I just wanted to say that it is always important to introduce the platform, uh, the various platforms that you're going to use earlier. So for example, if we really wanted you to um, say get a hands-on experience on the good focus, then would start with it in the beginning, apply it in the middle and keep going with it. Then people get to practice, even with our usual Mentimeter. It's rather better when we invite people to introduce themselves in the Mentimeter, maybe do something fun, and then later on do something serious-ish, and then serious. So they are getting used to the platform itself, and they are becoming more familiar with it, rather than now getting four Menti, then uh, Slido, then uh, uh, who else, you know, I think it brings compl complication, absolutely. And I think um, where we are is sharing more tips. I have shared mine, um, one of those ones, building on what you have said. And you could actually practice one thing, uh, maybe you have done it before, yes, and it's a liberating structure uh, methodology. So, you acknowledge what I have said with a yes, and then you add on what you would like to, to say. So who is ready to go? And greetings from my Guzlan. I, I hope you can hear the geese calling. Thank you. So continuing tips. Yes, Lucia. Are we playing the yes end? We were embracing the silence as we wait for the next speak, uh, someone who uh, can say, share a tips or, or challenges, you know, probably how do we go about design and facilitation of online hybrid events? Okay, my apologies for not jumping on it then. Um, uh, so yes, <laughs> and uh, um, I think we really have to consider also the um, uh, yeah the different connectivity issues that people may have from the uh, the locations where they're connecting from. So uh, it is uh, yes a little bit tricky if there are people in uh, in New York that have perfect connection and then people in. Uh, I don't know, even in Namakwaland, <laughs> as we have seen today with Bettina. Um, and so in a, yes, in a face-to-face -face meeting, these issues do not come up. Thank you, Lucia. And I'm waiting for the yes, Bettina. Yes. And I also think it's really important to understand what you are trying to achieve with your meeting. So who needs to be there and what is the most appropriate way for them to connect? Deborah. Thanks, Eddie. Um, so I wanted to pick up on, uh, Barbara mentioned earlier, this question of having two screens, for example, in a, in a room. If you're going to go hybrid, which I think is more and more the case into the future, hybrid within a face-to-face -face setting. And I think one of the things that I, I was listening to a colleague this week struggling with somebody who'd come in who was um, a senior member of the organization had come into a workshop. Um, and the placement literally of where the laptop is in a room. Um, and it was, it was behind the facilitator. Um, and somebody was running up to see the chat to check on what this person might be saying. Um, so working with the distraction problem of technology within a room like that, 
but also literally the physical placement of power where people on screen and people in the room have different forms of power and managing that quite sensitively, I think is going to become increasingly important. Thanks. Thank you very much, Deborah. If you were close by, I would have sent you a hug, but now receive the virtual one. Um, Got the, it. The, <laughs> thank you. The balance of power. Yes, and I experienced the challenge of balancing power. I think in this case, I was in virtual, and then there were people who were physical, and we were the forgotten participants in, in, many, in many cases. Okay. Oh, yeah, I wanted to make a point on the other speaker. So how do you balance the power? And then also, how do you, you know, minimize the interruption? Otherwise, I would unmute and say, hello, yes, on that point, be while and then interrupt, you know, a very nice conversation going on on the tables. Um, uh, thank you for that. And then you mentioned about, oh yeah, about uh, having two screens. Now, I have a screen on this side. Um, I have a screen on that side. So you can see that screen. But the reason I actually have this screen is, uh, is to ensure it is for internet connectivity and power outages. So this one is a laptop down here and it is connected to the internet of my cell phone. So when power goes off, my desktop will be out and the in main internet service provider will be out and I'll be and I'll leave the meeting that I'm facilitating unceremoniously. So to avoid that, in terms of tips and tops, I connect on two devices. But yes, over to you, Barbara. Tips and tops, the mute button gets lost many times. <laughs> yes, and when facilitating hybrid, whoever is facilitating in the room, ideally if they sit next to the person who's watching the chat and, and she's looking after the people who are not in the room, then you can get a nice role uh, taking turns to invite people to speak and so on. Uh, and I would add, if I could do my headline now for 2030, my dream would be in fact, like a hybrid meeting that I, I facilitated last week which was that the meeting room was set up for it. So my fantasy would be in 2030, even small groups would have a meeting room that can pick up the sound wherever people are sitting so that you don't have to be in front of your computer for people on Zoom to hear you. So just to describe, because it made it so much easier, is that we had a situation where everybody could manage their own microphone and that sound communicated really well to the people on Zoom. And these two big screens had all the faces of the people on Zoom. There were up to nine of them, so it wasn't enormous. But it meant they were big enough that we could all see if one of them was waving or had put up a sign that they wanted to talk. So I think in that way, you know, many of the meetings we run now, we just don't have that kind of technology. So you've got to kind of work around it. But if you can have those things, it makes a huge difference. Thank you very much, Barbara. Uh, that reminds me of you know those minor investments that you make. Now, Eddie, okay. you're on mute. I, yes, <laughs> I did this. I did. I invested in this little. Uh, conference sort of a uh, room uh, uh, my, my, uh, speaker which can pick up the sound around and it has some sort of noise cancelling except for the geese. It doesn't filter out the geese outside. Um, yes, anyone uh, inspired to share some tips and tops? Yes, 
Karisirai, thank you. Um, yeah, uh, yes, and um, a good tip is to be prepared for um, the worst. Um, yeah, be ready for the worst. Um, as Eddie mentioned, um, internet might go down. Um, something that did happen to me during um, in the build up to a workshop, um, a theory of change workshop fully online was that the other facilitator um, got COVID, um, his family <laughs> got COVID. So I pretty much um, had to step up and have other um, colleagues step up. And in order to be able to do that, you need really good communication during the planning um, as to what people have in mind. Because the person who wasn't able to, um, to facilitate, to lead facilitate, was the main leader <laughs> for it. And it just, yeah, lucky enough, we had spoken enough and I could make it up, but yeah, it's good to make sure that you have some plan, contingency plan in, in case, especially with the pandemic, somebody is off sick. Thank you. Thank you very much, Barbara. Good. That was a that was a good COVID, uh, Teresa. I really, I really think the contingency planning is something we used to also do for for in person meetings, right? We would say, what if we get there and there are power cuts and the projector like dies every time there's a power cut, or you know, how can we make sure the there is enough circulation or we have enough space for breakout rooms? In a way, one needs to be more sharp um, in the virtual space, and I. I really like what Barbara had to say, like how the technology can really help um, make it much easier. And, and I think often we think about hybrid as in either a lot of people in one room and some people joining virtually, but I really like the idea. I think that uh, I heard resonate uh, to, through what you've said, Barbara, to say, maybe we can have a couple of rooms with virtual participation, really good audio visuals, and we can have these rooms connect with each other um in an effective way and that is maybe also where we navigate time zones more effectively that some people have um those sessions before um then you have a joint session with everyone there and maybe the ones who've just woken up continue having another work session later um i think i think it's creatively and i think that is you have your hand over to you Sorry, I do. Um, yes, and um, it occurs to me that uh, what Barbara was, dis um, Barbara, what you were describing about having rooms set up for hybrid uh, meetings, I, I work in an organization where this is the norm <laughs> within my organization. So we're based in Edinburgh in London, and we do have rooms that are set up with microphones in the room. So you don't actually have to be top to do this and I think um, what then occurs to me is the importance of understanding what other um, what your other participants have in place um, in order to shape your planning and your facilitation to suit um, I guess it's also part of the planning for the worst but yeah it's good to understand what everybody else has because you know your own perspective probably isn't going to be yeah mm -hmm. And I think sometimes we need to maybe even challenge ourselves a little bit and say, so, okay, we know there are five people in location A, they don't have access to this equipment. Well, then is it possible for that day to rent a workshop venue with audiovisual facilities, professional support, good internet, and people will travel to that venue that is in the city maybe, um, or in the region, and then can participate fully. Because I think what happens is that if you can't participate fully, it really skews the power balance a lot. The ones who are having better access to technology, internet, being heard more clearly and maybe more frequently. Yeah. Let's uh, advance a little bit, shall we, Eddie? Yes, please. Um, and I lower the hand. Okay. Would you like me to share the screen? Yes, please. The ones with the ducks, please, I'd like. Exactly. I wanted to give you a couple of uh, um, thoughts as food for thought, because we also talked about facilitation. And I thought when we talk about hybrid events, 
I think we have to be, and I think we already alluded to this in the, in the session, we have to be extra sharp in how we are facilitating this. So here are a couple of tips I'd like to share with you. Next slide, Eddie, I'll do it quite quick. So we started doing the yes and, and I think in hybrid events, it is even more important to make your partner look good. And your partner in this case is not just your co-facilitator, your partner in this case is also whoever is in another location. May it be the location where people are meeting face-to-face -face or in several locations where people are meeting face-to-face. -face. I think it is really, really important that you think about how you can navigate this. And when technology fails, to be creative and to be gracious about it. Um, let's move to the next one. Be very present. I think from the facilitation side, hybrid events are the most exhausting events that you can possibly facilitate. You have to take stock in what's happening in a physical location in the room. You have to make sure um, this, uh, you, you're in touch with what happens virtually. And really, I think it's important that this is actually done by a facilitation team that is very sharp and focused on um, having a finger on the pulse um, of the different spaces. And then maybe we see opportunities that we didn't even know were there. Next one. And then quite importantly is how can you let go? So participants in the virtual space and in the hybrid space can actually take agency, can actually be self-responsible in their learning and can actually feel actually empowered to steer the direction of the conversation to have a flowing conversation. Sometimes we have conversations where I've waited so long to say my say that although it's no longer appropriate because the discussion has moved on, I'll say it anyway. And then I say the other two points that I think are really important because I think it might take forever for me to take another turn. And so letting go and really, the next one is the one that we already practiced, Say yes and, and make sure that in hybrid conversations, more important even than in physical conversations, we build on what, what the other is saying. Oops, we're going far, forward a little bit too fast. There you go. Thanks, Eddie. And we are, we're building on what the others are saying in a way that we really allow this to be a conversation that will take us somewhere. And that is a real facilitation challenge. I think it means you have to be in touch with the topic you have to be in touch with who's speaking. You have to create a process that allows people to surface what they are saying without necessarily making people who are physically in one space sit behind the individual device looking at a Zoom screen, because that would be also like kind of missing the point, right? So next one. And so we suggest short turn taking is really important. Having short segments, then something new happening, having different learning styles, having a presentation that is calm, having something actionable, having something that requires people to take a little risk um, and to, for, for this to be an exciting journey and a little bit of a surprising journey. Next one. So I wanted to share this with you just to give you an idea and not go through all the options necessarily, but. We, we looked at the Africa Dialogue platform as an Africa-wide event that was supposed to be a hybrid event. And we said, so what does it even mean? And I think often we start at what's practical. And I want to challenge us to say, can we start with what is it we want to achieve with a hybrid event? And can we put issues of power and participation and agency in the center of the planning? So do we want to have this one where basically the three bubbles are people from three different areas, from three different regions, Southern, Eastern and Western Africa in one place. And we have a very small group that joins virtually because they couldn't, they weren't able to travel. That requires a very different program design than the next slide. Maybe three separate hubs in East, West and Southern Africa and then just on the occasion for an hour or two a day, a virtual link up where others can also join. Next one. Or do we say, actually, it's mostly virtual, but we have these three places where we have a couple of presenters 
in person and that will make the whole event a bit more lively or next or do we want to say well actually it's mostly virtual but we have a couple of people in one studio that will give it a bit of a in, of an in-person feel the reason why i put this here is to say really it's up to us to see what is it we want to achieve how can we design hybrid events with having in mind what we would like to be the outcome to be tangible and intangible do we want to create more networks across regions then maybe we should really go for a place where the regions can interact effectively do we want to know what are the priorities within the regions well maybe then a, a sort of a regional hub approach is the better way so i wanted to put this out there to say i think there are so many versions of doing uh, hybrid events the limitation is probably really our imagination at this point um, and i really want to say there is not one way of doing hybrid events but there are so many different ways and what i want to say is just be kind to participants that when they travel to a location and are in person they don't feel they're actually in a zoom call because i think that is really a terrible fate and um then uh, we need to appreciate that people have taken the trouble to travel and incurred the carbon to travel and really make the most of the opportunity. Uh, next slide, Eddie. What helps, thank you, being a, 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 a sort of a glue sometimes in this, I wanted to share briefly is how we can use humor in these processes. Next slide. So I wanted to share with you an approach that we did this year, and uh, this is that uh, we, we ask um, a cartoon artist, Mangena, you can see him here in his self-portrait, um, from South Africa to join a learning lab process that was taking place in Lusaka and to join the project team. So often we have illustrators do something for us that we would then like to use, and Mangena joined all the meetings, he was part of the discussions, he went to the learning lab, and he was actually physically there in person. Some people could join virtually, some people were there in person. Mangena was there in person. He created cartoons, the cartoons sparked discussions, deeper unpacking, they're quite delicate matters of governance and um, issues of severe flooding um, and uh, the risk it poses to informal settlements in Lusaka. And I think it is really important to say that with more and more hybrid events, it is useful for us to think more creatively around how do we actually have and how do we um, put together our facilitation teams? Um, because I think humor, art, um, creative elements that keep people awake and engaged and allow them to link heart and minds are really uh, what we need going forward. And hybrid events and virtual events, in face-to-face -face events, uh, they're always appreciated. Next slide, Eddie. Thank you, Bettina. Um, uh, okay, um, as I advanced the first time, I thought about having co-facilitating with a cartoon artist. It, it seemed weird, but um, uh, I, I was keen and open, and then boom, you know, what came out was really amazing. I think here, an important question to ask is, who is missing on your facilitation team mm -hmm. um, that you have that you have not thought about that that would add value, but that uh, and 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 there is a possibility that then probably they are not the usual people that you think about. So I think it's a challenge for us also going forward. Who is missing in the room? Who is missing on the facilitation team? Over to you, Betty yeah that's true so we had cartoonathons before uh, mangena joined as a team member where we invited some cartoon artists like three or four to listen to a conversation and come up with cartoons they managed to draw incredibly tough cartoons to a place where someone says "Ah, oh, but this is not beautiful and we like we said no cartoon artists are putting the finger where it hurts and this is actually where we need to have these candid conversations so when the cartoon artists were invited to a meeting where everyone talked about best practice, the cartoon artists were panicking. They were saying, well, if there's no problem, why are we even here? And why is everyone talking about best practice? And we said, 
yes so actually let's talk to the organizer some more to say please we we know we know we're not just having bad practice we uh, best practice oops we also have challenges that we are facing and so how can we make sure we are more open about it so the cartoon artists can listen and really surface what is there and uh, this one is quite an interesting one about the funding stream for adaptation locally led adaptation and uh, Next slide, Eddie. I wanted to also say that we can also think of hybrid events on very high levels. For example, doing a cartoonathon with the COP presidency last year in Glasgow on preventing loss and damage, where we had a cartoon cartoonathon virtual and in person. And so you can link people to very high level global conversations effectively. And I think that is really something that we can possibly really bank on a lot more next slide so how that could look like is like this you can have the cartoon gallery you can see what the virtual participants are seeing on their screens and the virtual participants see what i see here and what you see in the shared screen you can actually see people in the room and it it is a little bit like a feeling if you're there as well and i think this is really important when we design virtual events hybrid events that we understand what is the experience of a participant in the room and what is the experience of a virtual participant. Next slide, Eddie. And then we had a cartoon wall in Glasgow, and this is where most people took loads of selfies. And I think we also need to understand what are people's needs and desires and how can we create spaces, virtual or physical, that will um, meet some of these uh, desires and some of these may be starting points for deeper conversations. And with this, Eddie, um, I want to say maybe to conclude, I think the future is probably what we make it. So you can see the caption. I'm not sure if you can read it. The caption says, no, thanks. We're, we're going to create some alternative options over here. Want to join? And I think this is the challenge I'd like to put to all of us is to say, can we think about better ways of doing hybrid meetings? Can we design them more innovatively? Can we make them exciting and creative um, engagements that are really effective because we do not have the luxury of time? Thanks, Eddie. I hand over to you. Awesome. Well, travel around the world in 80 seconds travel around the virtual hybrid facilitation in 80 seconds. That's how it feels in my head right now, uh, that we've been all around in talking about, you know, the design, talking about the technology, talking about the um, processing and keeping the participants engaged, talking about small uh, meetings, and then the huge, you know, uh, UNFCC meetings. Thank you. Thank you very much, Bettina, uh, for helping us to travel. I guess we probably were out of time. I, this is when uh, the, the conversion from the East African time to <laughs> the, the normal time uh, challenges me. But how do we get from here? How do we move forward? I think I would not I, I will not share my thoughts, but I'll I'll be keen to hear what you think uh, uh, about the hybrid and virtual the hybrid and online facilitation. What thoughts are moving in your head? How do we move forward? What resonated with you? What is more? And yes, then we can wrap it very well zifo zondo greetings to you jessica greetings i'm sending my greetings right now salam greetings lucy katia yeah all of you greetings uh thank you for joining please fire any thoughts i was just saying the blah blah so that i can hear your thoughts how do we move forward what resonated with you? And I can see Laura says sometimes it seems we are always running out of time, but 
there are moments when we need to take time. Thank you very much. And Barbara says, is there some place that these kinds of cartoonists advertise themselves? Bettina, I think you can actually now respond to that one. Uh, even there, Laura earlier on said that, yes, we need to invest in digital literacy. And Ivan has a hand up. Yes, Ivan. Um, <clears throat> thanks. Thanks for that. Um, just, just one thing from my side is, I know, and I really resonated with what, what Bettina said in, in <clears throat> our biggest limitation in how we can use hybrid events is our own imagination. Um, how we can use hybrid events to to make engagements and governance more inclusive, and I've, I maybe have a question to to the hosts about how can we structure hybrid events and use this technology that we have at our disposal to make governance and engagements more inclusive to, to people that don't necessarily have the access to uh, the necessary technology like most of us in this room I assume have. Um, which to me we, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an area of a lot of possibility, but yeah, I just thought if you might have any thoughts on that. Mm. Thank you. Um, okay, I, 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 that question reminds me of a question I had wanted to ask earlier on. Where is the budget, the travel budget gone? Where did the travel budget go. I remember when COVID just hit, you know, there was this, how do how are we going to implement, but then the travel budget, okay? Uh, could the travel budget be used to make sure that people who do not have access to internet, the appropriate gadgets can have access to those? Thank you very much. Uh, Bettina, if you may reflect on that as we come to the end, it's yeah, I think uh, I, I I like I like Barbara's uh, takeaway. By the way, design, design, design. I may be a bit biased in design, but I really think we think often about practicalities before we think about design. And if we could just change the order, I think that'll already be amazing, actually. And to really start with, why are we doing this event in the first place? What are the tangibles and intangibles that we would like? And then to say, what would be a good way to get there? is we, we do it in most other decisions that we're taking and, and only often in meetings when we organize them we start with the logistics and how many slots we can fit in a six hour day not deciding that we want to have a six hour day but sort of starting with that as a sort of a a, a rigid starting point so i i really think uh, um it's spot on um i think ivan the technology is maybe something if we're serious we need to invest in it and if we're serious we can invest in it also in a temporary way we can find hotels and i think more and more so i think where we can find places where people can have good access and where they can maybe join a meeting and maybe that means people travel within the region maybe it means someone takes a bus or a ship or a train to be in a place that is two hours away it doesn't mean that you necessarily do zero traveling, but I think it means that you have 100% access when you're there and you can be 100% present in the process. Then I think it's a really good investment. 100% present in the process. Thank you very much, Bettina. Um, we come to the end of our session, lest I don't be offered another one tomorrow. But uh, there are some announcements here below. You can check out the mural, check out the sessions that are coming uh, about future and possibilities for our cities uh, down there. And I would like to take an, a hashtag from Lucia who says it will be experimentation and learning curve. The hybrid um, uh, facilitation is going to be a steep, probably, learning curve and an experimentation. Thank you very much for joining. And how about we just share a small gift, just pick up a gift. One could be under your seat, one could be probably in front of your computer, but imagine that imaginary gift and then share it with us, uh, wishing us the best uh, as we go on this learning curve. Here you go. There goes my gift.
over to you. Uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Have a lovely time. We're received. Uh, yes. Bye bye. Uh, thank. You. Bye. Thank you very much, everybody. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you.